Hey, and welcome back to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, as you probably already know, and in this tutorial we're going to be doing something super exciting and cool and fun, and we're going to be renaming our element plates. Uh, that's uh, super exciting, but it's actually really important, because at the moment um, our current element plates are not named in a way that's useful for us to know where I know where they are, but if I pass it on to someone else, they don't know where they are. And it just keeps everything clean and tidy. So what I'm going to use here, like, I'm sure you could do it in Red Cine X, but I didn't do that, and I, I'm not sure how to, and I'm, I'll look into it. Um, I'm just trying to get through these as fast as possible. But for me, it's easier to use bulk rename utility, and I use this all the time for renaming bulk items. So I've got it open here, and it's you can download it. I'll put a link in the description. I'm just going to go to my my file, and I've put in more elements. And here we have all our. I'm not going to do this all. I'm just going to do one, and then I'll go through go through them all, and you you, you get the idea. So I've got my shots. I've put them under BO1. And if I go in there, I've got my element plate, which is my chrome balls, and on here is actually my sequence plate. So the problem is here, I have my uh, image sequence starts at zero, and it goes all the way up. It's not a huge problem, it's just messy. Um, we don't need all these uh, zeros in here to go up to 100 frames, and that's not how we had planned it anyway. So if you remember, previously when we're going through the transcoding and going through each of our shots, I didn't put this in a fancy document, but I wrote down everything regarding to each of these shots. So I, because I knew I was going to do this at some point and it just means that now I've got all this, uh, these start frames and end frames. So I've got my BO1 and my start frame is actually 977 and my end frame is 1082. But my cut range is 1001 to 158. These are our handles. So that gives us the wiggle room in the edit. So what I need to do is Make sure I know that this is uh, BO1 and make these um, frame numberings relative to these. So the first thing that I'm going to do is going to go remove. So you've got all these tools down here and they're pretty self they're pretty self-explanatory for most of them. We will only really be doing remove first, last number. So if we go to remove. And if we look at the top, so if we select all, so if we select all of them first, we can see that our edits are happening in green. And if you watch this, is we're deleting these, this numbering. Cool. So we've deleted that numbering, and we can go over to numbering here, and we can change this to uh, mode suffix. And you can see now that it's got start at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But we don't want that. We want that to start at 9, 7, 7. Because this is our handles. And our actual frame range is starting at 1,001. So now we've renamed this. And we've got this in a sort of a logical order. We kind of need something a bit more of a descriptor on our, on our actual image sequence. So at the moment it's A3503. All these numbers so I'm actually going to leave that as it is so if I ever need to go back to the original original footage I know exactly which footage this is so I'm going to add a prefix I call this B01 or B01 underscore and now I can see that I've got my descriptor of what shot it is. It's BO1. And we've got BO1, A3503. It's going to be quite a long, long, long numbering if we uh, do that. Um, let me just double check what the rest of the numbering is like. Yeah. 
So let's leave it as that. Then what I will do, and insert BG01 at position just before I want to add underscore BG01 underscore V01. It's quite long numbering. Um, but you, you can do you can do whatever you want as long as you know as long as you can go back to your original plate from the card and know which this is going. It's absolutely fine. I know it's a little bit long, but now we know that this is for shot B01. And our A this is the bit here is what's linking our, to us to our original footage, so we know if we need to change it or add anything to it. And we've got our version one and our shot number. So it's pretty much going to be that simple. And I'm going to go through and do that for all the shots. Like, so you don't have to, you can, you can obviously keep it like that is, but, but um, I would do it this way just so I know what my frame rates are. And obviously, from what we wrote down in the previous tutorial as well, we can check that it all marries up and it's 1082. Oh, it goes up to 1083. Maybe I added one extra frame on. My math was not so great, but we got enough. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Super interesting tutorial about renaming. Um, it's really important, to be honest. It keeps everything organized, and that's really what you want with these sort of big projects. So it's been fairly quick. Um, yeah, there's never really nothing else to really say about that. And then all I'm going to do is click rename, and it's going to go 107 files about to be processed. I'm just going to click OK. So now all my files have been renamed. So now if I go back to my actual file, BO1, so now it's got my descriptor. It's got BO1, A0355, C03, so it's got where the original plate came from, the background 01 plate, version 1, starting at frame 977. Cool. And yeah, we're, so we're pretty, pretty much done. So, I know it's not been that super interesting, it's been pretty quick, and yeah, our next one we'll go on to is doing the photogrammetry for the shots. So I hope you enjoyed this really quick tutorial, um, it's not super exciting, but I think it's still really important to do. Very, keeping all your organisation within your shots is really key to making things work a lot easier. So, so actually we've just got one more thing we need to do before we actually finish, and that's repathing our images in our Premiere Pro because we may have done some things a little bit backwards. So I've named everything, I've done my edit ref first, then I've renamed things. So obviously now when I open my edit ref in Premiere Pro, it's not going to find anything because it's looking for the wrong names. But luckily Premiere Pro is clever enough to know that we can repath them. We don't have to completely fix it, it will recognize the, the sequence anyway. So. I've just opened up my edit ref and yeah, you, you probably want to, I don't know, if you're following this through, it's probably now too late for you and you're probably going to do this, but um, you might want to rename it beforehand. I just forgot about this. Um, it happens. Cool. So we're just going to repath and link our media from our shots that we renamed. And all we need to do is go to here and we can go to locate. And we have all our shots here that I've went through and renamed and transcoded. Let's reduce this. So it's one of the reasons why I always keep the shot names as well. Because if you just completely renamed this to like blah, 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 whatever, whatever, and you had no reference to what your shot is, so we're going to open up BO1. So I know this is my first shot in my sequence, and it's from... The Rushes A35 CO3. And it's this one here. So I can search for that. Oh no. Select OK. If I go to the top, it's now found it. And it's clever enough to understand that even though it's not the exact same name, it's got this of frames in it. 
And all we're doing is changing it from Uh, yeah, it, it already recognized it. So we're just prompting it to recognize this. And it shouldn't change anything because our range has not changed. So I'm just going to go through and do this for all the other ones. Um, so A3, BO2. So these are all in order. So BO2, A35, CO7, A35, CO7. So that's this one. Okay. And that's found that. And I'm just going to keep going through. I'm not going to explain each one, so I'll just go through and uh, do them one by one. It's always worth to double check that they're definitely the right ones before actually. It shouldn't uh, match them up anyway, but uh, we got A35 CO3, A35 CO3, we got CO5. A3, CO5. A3, CO12. A3, CO12. So you can avoid this by uh, probably renaming first, but um, like if you do come across this, it's not, not an issue. Because you can just do this. C17. This is why it's so important to be organized because it's even if it's it is in grand schemes it's quite a, it's quite an annoying big mistake actually thinking about it but um it's very easily fixed just by because we kept everything organized a35 c18 we've got c21 C22, and that could be a bit annoying, but uh, at least it's nothing's really broken. We're just repathing it. Uh, C30, and 39. Cool, so that's now found all the image sequence. So now when we load up our edit ref, um, that's opening up the GoPro VR player for some reason. So now if I go through my edit, it's exactly the same. It's just now I've got my named, even under here, it's still bringing it in. It's got my uh, actual uh, proper shots in. So yeah, there's just one thing just to repath them and just to double check that you've got them in correctly. Uh, just so you, when you do go back to your edit ref, it should all be fine. Cool, so yeah, um, that's uh, naming and repathing stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It's probably quite a boring tutorial. Um, it's a really important tutorial though. Um, and I, I would definitely go through the motions of making sure your stuff is organized and everything's in its correct folders, named correctly. Just for like things like this, that's really easy to fix. But yeah, anyway, I won't go on. So um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, drop any comments if you have any. Um, it's always nice to hear some feedback. And uh, yeah, have a have a good day, night, evening, whatever time it is. And uh, thanks for watching.